Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlotte and the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have some special guests on the line today. That's right. Harry Champion and Jamel Hill. Welcome, ladies. Hey, what's going on, y'all? How do y'all feel this morning? Jamel's talking bad about me. We feel tired. Jamel's tired because she's that? old. Let me get my light right. Oh, y'all in L.A.? Yeah. Yeah, so yes. it's, early, it's hell here. <laughs> well, thank y'all for waking up to check in with us because I know it's a big deal for you guys. And um, I do want to talk about the new show. I heard LeBron is on the first episode. He is. That's exciting. So LeBron came on. He did this a solid. I don't know if you guys saw yesterday. He had a, um, uh, a letter. He did this letter. Um, for more than a vote, giving a call to action to everybody who wants to do more than just post on social media. And he talked about the letter uh, and what he's trying to do with that organization and other entertainers. And it was really special. He's turning into quite the activist. I asked him if he wanted to be a um, politician and he, he wouldn't answer yes or no. So I think he might have a career. Yeah, but he didn't say no, though. Now, why did you call her auntie he before we started the show? You called her auntie and said she's horrible with technology. Ah! <laughs> Andy, I, I'm trying to cause a divide. Exactly. <laughs> I know you immediately go to the mess, Envy. What's trying to pit these women against each other? Like she an auntie, you know she bad with technology. I'm just asking. Envy, <laughs> stick to radio, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we both aunties in our own way, though. Is that um, uh, you know she may be an auntie. She's not that bad with technology. I was just messing with her. But we, you know, it's funny you brought that up because the whole reason that or one of the reasons that this show kind of conceptualized is that when we both were at ESPN on Sundays and during NFL Sundays, we would get on Periscope mm -hmm. and um, people start calling us the aunties. We were like your drunk aunties talking about football. And so <laughs> it became kind of a thing. Like I embrace my auntiehood, my auntiness. Like I like to think I'm on the younger spectrum of the auntiness, but you know, I enjoy it. Yeah. No, you don't. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you don't. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> If you're the auntie that grew up on NWA and 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 Two Live Crew, right? You know, you you you're gonna always have that 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 attachment to the kids. The kids yeah. will always be able to relate to you and so. <laughs> exactly. Like I'm the auntie that you know. If you leave, if the nieces and nephews get left with me, I'm gonna have them learn how to make a drink at nine, like me and Carrie had to. There so. you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ironic that you guys have this show stick to sports and everything that's happening right now with sports, like. The debate about whether or not the NBA should come back based on what's happening with social justice and making sure that people are paying attention and being told that athletes should stick to sports. And now you have a show called Stick to Sports and the whole world is completely different than it was. I feel like just three years ago, Jamil, when you actually even tweeted about Donald Trump being a white supremacist and having the support of white supremacists. And now it's kind of like, here we are. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the title of the show is, is more ironic than anything. And I think Carrie put it best is that this is really kind of a middle finger to a lot of the people that not only tried to silence athletes who wanted to use their voice and their platform to bring awareness to various issues from Colin Kaepernick to LeBron James, yeah. um, but also to us. I mean, we were pretty high profile people at ESPN. You guys obviously are familiar with what I went through. Uh, Carrie went through similar um, struggles, especially internally at ESPN. Um, so this is to all those people who try to, you know, just silence Black people, period. This is like your, your, your whole stick to sports campaign didn't work. And now we're at a point where sticking to sports is not even optional. And so it just goes to kind of show you that um, despite sometimes a lot of backlash you may receive, controversies or, or what have you, that ultimately the side of right will prevail, even if it's a slow climb to, um, you know, to that, to, to things being prevailed on that end. So like, uh, so for us, this is really just kind of a, you know, a big fuck you. It's, it's, a, it's all good. <laughs> well, don't, you think, don't you think somebody at ESPN owes you an apology though? Because they literally didn't want you to talk about issues revolving around social justice. And that's pretty much all they talk about now. Charlamagne, I got Well, but that's the only because they, the only reason why they do that, honestly, and Charlamagne, you and I have talked about that privately. The only reason why they're doing that is because they have to. Have you guys heard what I, I like to call corporate social justice? Everybody's full of shit. And so, and because it's in right now, they're doing it. It's what is they, it could be anybody, it could be ESPN, it could be any other corporate company that doesn't really 
really get behind the cause. But behind closed doors, the meetings after the meeting, that's where all of those microaggressions happen, where you, they're hearing people say, I wish we didn't have to talk about this. I wish we didn't have to um, move forward with this conversation. And, and I think, you know, you asked Jamel a question. I don't even think she wants an apology, so I'll let her finish that. I think she, the apology is, all, is, is the success is the revenge. You know, the, the moving forward is, is really the icing on the cake. They didn't let her back on TV until we got our own show, though, because they were like, we don't want to fool with her. Nobody wants to fool with her. I just had to <laughs> beg some people. I had yeah. to be like, y'all, let my girl come back on TV because she's been in punishment and purgatory long enough. Just let her hang out with us. You think yeah. it was a slight back of little black ball? It wasn't no black ball, was it? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Carrie's just okay. joking. Like, it was no black ball. But, I mean, you asked about an apology. I got the best of, of apology there is. It's called a check. Because I want to be So. Yeah, right. It just seems very hypocritical at ESPN because, you know, I'd be seeing them now. Like, they'd be having, having our good sister Angela Rye on ESPN. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, I, I saw didn't know that there one day. And I was like, what, wow. what, what in the matter is this? Exactly. Wow. So I just think I that's kind of, that. I think that's very hypocritical at ESPN, personally. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I, they, I, I'm they just, are hypocrites. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's look, it's, it's an uncomfortable time for a lot of these com uh, companies. It's not just ESPN. They have had reckonings that have happened inside the building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a lot of, you know, we both still have friends at ESPN. There's been a lot of conversations inside the building about, you know, they need to be much like many of the others in, in corporate media and just corporations, period. Before they need to, you know, putting out these little pretty ass statements is one thing, but like, can you address what's happening inside of your building? Can you address the fact that you have a very uh, a low number of, um, you know, uh, black decision makers in key positions? What does your production staff look like? Why are there no, or why are there not enough black senior uh, coordinating producers and junior producers? That's the stuff that they have to deal with. So before you put out any statements and put out any specials, deal with that part of your business. And I think ESPN is just in a, in a long line of people having to yeah, face- Yeah, that are doing that. Yeah, that are doing that and having yeah. to face that internal reckoning. How do you play the line? I think that, you look at certain I'm things. sorry, go ahead. If you look at you know some people that say, you know, hey, I get politics all day long. And when I want to watch sports, I just want to watch sports. And then you give some people that say, no, I want politics to be part of sports because it all matters. So how do you play that line to decide how far you go when you're talking about politics and sports? Because some people are like, look, I don't care about politics. I see it all day long. I just want my sports. I want to see LeBron shoot 60. You know, how do y'all play that line? I think that our, our show, Stick to Sports, is a little bit of everything. I just, you know what I hate that? I hate the idea, the premise that sports and politics do not integrate because they do. They intersect and they've intersected since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. I think it's unfortunate that we've lied to America or people have believed the lie, more importantly, that the two don't intersect. People who say stick to politics only want to hear about it when it's not favorable in whatever they believe. So if Colin Kaepernick was kneeling for cancer, we wouldn't even be here today. This wouldn't even be a conversation. They'd be like, what American hero he is. Can you believe what he did? I really appreciate the fact that he's kneeling for cancer. And for whatever reasons, the gesture has become uh, 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 what people think is disrespect, which it's not. In fact, it's, he was told to do that. And you guys know the story but it's better than I do by a white soldier who said that's the, the biggest form of respect. Um, uh, the fight came to him. He wasn't trying to find the fight. And I think that when people say stick to politics or stick to sports, what they're essentially saying is, like you said, I just want to see LeBron play. But kudos to LeBron because LeBron is very aware of the fact that they just want him to be a player, right? But he's like, because I am arguably the, the greatest, the biggest athlete of all time, that's a whole nother debate, I'm going to make sure that I put my name in this conversation. And while he may not be considered the greatest in terms of playing basketball, it might be Michael Jordan, he wants to make his, his legacy more about what he is doing off the court. And mm -hmm. so when these people look at LeBron as transcendent, not necessarily black, and he's a great athlete, he's going to be able to tell them, no, you have to also recognize all parts of me. He's making it impossible to not just ignore the things that are happening in this country. He's making it impossible for you not to equate his name with the idea of fighting against racism and inequality and voter suppression. And for him, to me, that is a huge thing to do. I've never seen another athlete do it in a way in which he's done it. We weren't there when Muhammad Ali did it, but he lost his career because of it. Mm -hmm. And Jamal and I say this all the time. 
we love Muhammad Ali because he, they, we, as in mainstream America, love Muhammad Ali because he couldn't talk. He didn't start getting love until, he, until people couldn't really hear him in very many ways, and he wasn't as vocal. He was calm. He was acceptable. He was easy. He was compliant in their eyes because, unfortunately, he wasn't, he wasn't his full self at that time. I love LeBron's activism, but do you think that he's even more intentional about his activism because he knows that's what separates him from MG? Being that he knows he'll probably never catch MG on the court. That's um, such a hater question. That is a question. <laughs> that is that is a hater question. You're so hater question. Question. There was no right hate now. in that question at all. A actually, so you know what, Charlemagne, you're asking it. You should be asking it in the inverse. Is Michael Jordan now more vocal about social justice because of LeBron? That's oh, what, okay. I mean, that might be a better question. I mean, honestly, and this is not to say that Michael Jordan's social justice awareness now and his attempts to kind of really change the perception that he wanted to distance himself from our community is not genuine. I think it's very genuine. But let's be honest, in this player debate, people often... Oh. Man, that's she was talking about Carrie's. Yeah, see, Angela, that's what happened. I think that part. Yo, but your computer went out, black girl. You talking about me? Your computer broke, black girl. Why you talking about me? Why you being so eloquent? You know what? And I'm and I'm right next to my Wi-Fi. That's what's so messed up. I'm like, that's because God don't like us. That's an example. See, you know what? All right, black girl, go ahead. I started talking about Michael Jordan, and that was that was that was the basketball guy saying talking about Black Jesus like that. You don't talk about Black yeah. Jesus disrespectful. Yeah. Call yourself I will, out. I will, restart, <laughs> I will restart my answer. Uh oh. Uh oh. Damn it! <laughs> this might really be Black Jesus for real. This better not wow. happen during the show, man. <laughs> uh, she. We actually are doing a show in studio, so thank God. Oh, that's I can't great. Let her. Yeah, so we can't let her bad technology. After when she come back on, why she trying to be so 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 thoughtful? After that time when she met Michael Jordan, why she rolled up on him and talked smack to him? That's the <laughs> best story ever. But y'all, young. There you go. Okay, Jamel, get an answer about Michael Jordan. All right, I was give it. I was like, I, see, every time I bring up his name, that see, mm, he not that's messing me. with. You. <laughs> yeah, he. I was like, oh, gee, he must have Jesus on the side. Um, no, the the question should honestly be asked in reverse. Is like, is Michael Jordan? being more intentionally socially aware because when we ever we start that player debate about who's better lebron or jordan yeah. one of the things people always bring up is well maybe he isn't as equal to michael jordan as a player but he's a better humanitarian and we would be fooling ourselves to think that that didn't have at least some influence on michael jordan now being more active um socially and politically and that's not to say that it's not genuine mm -hmm. that's not to say yeah. that mike is trying to compete with LeBron necessarily, but you know, as they say, iron sharpens iron. And sometimes you see other people doing something and it makes you want to do that as well. So honestly, I don't think, I think if anything, my two cents is that I think it's Michael Jordan understanding through LeBron that this is something that he's got to rectify when it comes to his perception because that's the most negative thing people say about michael jordan yeah i think now, you're right you i think you're when right you, when you saw him carrie was asking you a question what happened when you rolled up on michael jordan <laughs> see i didn't roll up on michael jordan what happened was, <laughs> was that he actually spotted carrie this is a few years ago at nba all-star weekend in toronto and um you know we snuck into his party like we went on the list, we straight up snuck in there. Cause to me, when you sneak into a party, that's like way better than being on the list. Cause that's right. what I for sure. That's like that, was, that was the mansion. That was the mansion in Toronto. So that you was said, the yes. room. Y'all snuck into the private room too. Yes, we did. Yes, yes, we yes. did. Yes. Do that. yes. <laughs> Only yeah. reason I know is because I did the same. I did the same, but go ahead. Okay, good. No, we did it, Angela. Somebody said to us, like, are y'all supposed to be in here? We was like, mm-hmm. And so if you weren't with us in our crew, we had like seven folks. If you weren't sitting tight with us, like on a girl pod, you know how we all stick together, you'd be holding hands, trying to get in, you'd get left out. So some people got left Actually, out. And, and Carrie, I don't know if you remember this, the person no, no. I'm pretty sure that we snuck in with, because we did that whole- Was it Draymond? No, I think it was Paul George. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I slept in with Lala. I stayed in with Lala. Lala walked in and I were, I'm, I'm moving right with Lala. But go ahead. See what I'm saying? Like, that's how you do it, right? That's that, like, that's that. So they put their hand up in front of Envy, like, okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you already know when you women, you, you it's much yeah. easier for you to do. they like, all right, whatever. So we go to the, the VIP VIP where I think Drake was DJing. And yep. everybody's in there. It's like, you know, Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook and D-Wade and, you know, all the people. And uh, Michael Hello, Jordan. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yep, all of them. And Jordan was in there. And so he stopped Carrie because he recognized her. And I was sort of next to her, but my back was turned. So I didn't see Bro, you got to tell them that part why I got, I, look, y'all, this is real. This is so awful. I don't know if we edit this in or out. I was like, does he think? I was like, how do you, because, you know, I'm just, we working in the bubble of age fitness. So I'm all like, I didn't even know. That he even knew who we were, and I was like, "Does he think I'm an old lover?" I don't. What? I was no. like, "Hi, sir. Um, <laughs> nice. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie from ESPN, sir." And then so I love that like, Carrie was like, "Did he confuse me with one of his former yams?" That's I'm, a I'm like, "I'm not a yam. <laughs> I've, I've never met you. It's a pleasure." <laughs> so the shit was hilarious, and then Jamel. Just a me, I was like, and I grabbed her right because she always by by safety. I grab her, I make her come and start talking to him because I I'm just like, why is this man talking to me? And he, but he was with his wife. He was he lovely. Yeah, she was lovely. And he sat there. Here's the funny part about this. She'll get into how she rolled into him. But mind you, all night long at that time, it wasn't cool to be friends with people in the media. Jamel was on his and hers, and I was on first take. And you have to realize, uh, I had just a first take. They didn't like a lot of the players didn't like what people on first take had to say they didn't like his and hers because it was all about opinion so you have to understand no one was really talking to us in that party nobody like hey. i walked past us three or four times like whatever you know and and <laughs> and then you know and we knew gabby and we was like hey gabby but she she in the vi section with her husband d wade looking around carmelo no one's really talking to us because it's like we're enemies like why are we in this section of media mm -hmm. and then so Jordan, he don't know the rules. He, the rules are not to talk to the media. He just stops talk to us legitly for 30 to 45 minutes yeah. standing wow. there. People were walking up to him trying to get his attention. He's like, yeah, 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 no, go ahead, ask me anything. So Jamel, pick up the story from there. So, ask me anything. Of course, you know, y'all know my background. I'm from Detroit. I grew up a really big Pistons fan. Uh, and there are certain things that Detroiters would never let go. Number one on that list is Isaiah not being on the dream team. So, oh, Lord. <laughs> so absolutely. I was like, I just, you know, he's talking, he's saying all this great basketball stuff, talking about how if there was any player in the league that he would pay to see, it was Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're just having a basketball conversation. And I was like, you know what, for all of Detroit, for the 313, I got to ask this question. I was like, why did you hold, I, I was like, why did you keep Isaiah off the 92 Dream team? I just straight up asked him. I was like, dude, that was wrong. He should have been on the Dream team. And he just looked, yeah, and he just looked at me dead in my face, and he was like, nobody wanted Isaiah on that team. But they can make it back. No lies. He said <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. Well, no, that's what I was about to say. He said they can make me the bad guy, but nobody wanted him on that team. That's what he said. And I was just that like, true. really? You just gonna hurt my feelings right in this beautiful party? <laughs> How do you feel about Carrie? Because Carrie said nobody likes Isaiah Thomas. I know, but Carrie, it's okay for Carrie to be wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, see, now I don't want to give away uh, this part of it, but let's just say we posed the same question to LeBron in, in our premiere episode. About okay, Isaiah? So Yes, no, I go, no, I go. That's all I'm going to say. I'm okay, so look. Okay, so no. No, you're not. Go ahead, black girl. Let's, you got me grabbing air. It's too yeah. late. <laughs> this is what happened. We asked LeBron, the only argument Jamel and I have ever had, I don't know where the hell he's coming from, but we, he was in New York at an event. We in a car service and driving back. Maybe that weekend, I don't know what happened, but Isaiah sent us a bottle of champagne. And I thought, wow, that's nice. We were at some restaurant. She had talked to him and he sent us some some champagne. It was like, that's nice. So we get in the car. We're like, who's the better human? <laughs> Isaiah or Magic Johnson? And don't ask us why we're having this discussion. And by the way, I believe this was your question. Posted. Who is the better human? That's a good question. That's what they do with and LeBron it, and Jordan now. Yeah. Because the right? basketball argument is so far away. Like we know Michael Jordan so, so much better. But go ahead. who's the better human? So, you know, listen, let me tell you about her old trader self. 
She went to Michigan State. Who went to Michigan State? So you think she's going to go with magic, but she's like, listen, who brought us these chips, right? So it's Isaiah. So I'm diehard Laker fan. So she, we, you know, we, she like, but we getting all in a business. And we don't know shit. We talking about who dated who, who, who did what to who, who kept who off the team, who got jealous. She was like, magic got jealous when Isaiah started beating him and he couldn't take it. So that's why they stopped being friends. And I was like, well, when magic, you know, kissed him on the cheek, everybody started talking bad about we just we're just making up shit. Like we don't know anything. So we're literally in the car arguing. It sounded like a barbershop <laughs> argument, basically. It was like we argued about the stupidest shit. Like we that I think about it, I'm like, why is that an argument? Then we just, I was like, whatever then, whatever, like whatever. So then LeBron comes on the show. I said, LeBron, can you settle this argument? Who's the better human? Wow. <laughs> And he answers, but doesn't answer. And y'all right. gotta watch the first episode because the shit vindicated. is crazy. <laughs> hey, I was gonna tell you too. I think you're right about MJ because I think MJ realizes one of the reasons LBJ is getting close to him is because of his activism. Because people bring yep. that up in who's the greatest player of all time debate. They do literally say, well, "Who's who was a better activist? Who's a better human?" And, and but you and guys I are forgetting MJ didn't. Sorry, Charlamagne. MJ didn't have this have didn't have it was a different set of circumstances like we can't compare activism apples to apples oranges to oranges this guy grew up or grew up came to fame before social media came mm -hmm. to fame and was balling way before we really were in that if it, it would have been the 70s it would have been a different argument but the 80s to the 90s we were we were not protesting and hitting the streets in a way in which that people regarded it that they had to be involved as well mm -hmm. and and he is wrong for all the things in which not wrong. He said some stuff that made it uncomfortable. But I think if you gave him an opportunity to be around currently, he would. He might do the same thing or do it in a different way. There's no comparison there. That's not fair. But he is petty, and he's very competitive. Well, sure. So he probably is doing all this activism just to one up LeBron. Or maybe like, he really feels it. You can't say why somebody's. We seen the last dance. He's very petty. I was going to ask Jamil this, you know, do you still wear the Detroit Pistons jersey now that it has the Jumpman logo on it? Oh! <laughs> you know what? Like, oh! Nah, he just, just starting trouble, but, good, but you know what? Question. He's not wrong about this because a lot of Detroit fans pointed that out, like, mm, do mm -hmm. we y'all just add insult to injury right now? Our basketball team ain't shit, and then on top of that, <laughs> we gotta, Who's we the better do. human, Jamel, MJ or Isaiah Thomas? <laughs> You don't yeah, even want to start that conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't never own a pair of J's? Um, I, I have two pair of, of Jordans, but I, I think they're my thing. But like, like my, and I, I think I, I got those. They, yeah, honest. I was going to say, they probably sent those to you. Yeah, they, I got sent those. But I, look, I'm not anti, I'm not anti Michael Jordan. I don't want people to get that impression. Right. But growing up, You're it pro was Detroit. Hard. You're pro yeah, Detroit. It, That's yeah, what we it, call it. It's, it's, it was hard because like the Bulls were right there. You know, y'all saw the last dance. You know what the history was. It was legitimate hatred uh, between these two franchises. And the part that wasn't brought up in the last dance. And I, not a, not oh, a, not a, oh, Patty LaBelle. I feel like I need to bring this up because okay. everybody's on the pistons ass about walking off the court. What they don't bring up, you know where I'm going, what they don't bring up is how in that series, Michael Jordan tried to delegitimize their championships by saying they were bad for the NBA and bad for basketball. That's what set it off. That's what okay. it off. Because me. he felt, they Excuse felt- me. The producer, he left, that out. he left that out on purpose. Of course he left that out. They did not leave that out on purpose. And, and I, you know what? People if it like was my time, I didn't that though. It, I heard that, that you know, somewhere. That wasn't in the last day. But they, everybody said that about the Pistons at the time, Jamel. So is everybody else in trouble? You don't understand. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, speaking of people not saying nothing, didn't nobody say anything when the Celtics did it to us? Nobody said a word. The Celtics because nobody up. liked y'all, and that's why Zeke wasn't on <laughs> okay. the dream team. We, we will take and that. So it's fine. Nobody was fooling with y'all. Like that's the only reason why. And so who cares? Nobody liked y'all. Y'all had y'all little chips. Y'all go and win. Man, that's fine. Well, nobody fooling with you. Your little about chips. That you got your little chips. Don't let them talk to you like that. I know. Hey, who I need to say little chips when we beat the Lakers for all our championships. That's How many chips know. we got? How many <laughs> chips we got, Jay? How many chips we got? I need to That's know who y'all producer is. Who reels all of this in? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who reels all of this in on set? He's gracious. Who you think Nobody. is going to win this year in the bubble? The Lakers. Lakers. <laughs> did, did you even need to ask? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think the Lakers, too. What Thank about you, DJ you, know? and V. 
Yeah. Now, let me, I want to ask you a question just off topic for a second. We were talking about Kamala Harris yesterday and how they talk about, oh, you know, they're bringing up, she slept with this person and that's how she got here as women in this industry. Because we were all talking about this as a topic, how you get accused of things just because people are jealous. You got into a position and people just throw anything out there. So has that happened to you ladies in your career where people have accused you of things just because <laughs> you're in the position that you're in? I know why Carrie's laughing already. <laughs> Go carry them. Go carry. <laughs> you know what? First of all, try to imagine like he's not one of my closest friends, but that's fine. Um, so no, yes, and Angela, you can relate to this. Jamel, I don't know. Jamel, you give your take on it after I say what I have to say. I, I don't believe that it's fair because here's the low hanging fruit. If you are somewhat attractive, if you interview somebody, you get an exclusive, you fuck them. So that's low hanging fruit to me, right? So that's just where you go. It, it, it never, it's always about, it's never about your resume and what you've been able to do. When I first got to ESPN, I use this as an example, and I had always experienced this my entire career. But when I first got to ESPN, Jamel, I don't know if you guys know this, Jamel was supposed to get the host job, or that's what the streets thought. And we were both up for it. So the way society likes to pin two, two black women against one another, and you think there can only be one, so you don't fool with other black women. Like you grow up thinking that, which is simple. And thank God Jay didn't have that mentality. So when I got the job and she didn't, I used to hear all this stuff about what I did to get the job and, and that's why she didn't get it and why, why she didn't get, you know, all this nonsense. So Jay had reached out to me and sent me an email and when I didn't respond, she thought I wasn't fooling with her. It was because I didn't know, how, like she said, I'm not tech savvy. I didn't know how to work email stuff in my first time. So I will, I'll own that. I'll own that. <laughs> but she went out of her way to, to make sure that this narrative that two black women could live in the same space. You guys know what they did to Kamala and I'll, and I'll, I'll liken it to that. Like, why were they, all these black women who were, who could have been VP candidates, they're comparing them. Like she's this, that one's that. They didn't do that with white women. That's just unfair. And we buy into that as black folks. We buy into the narrative that there could only be one. And that is not true. We, we all can eat. And I, and, I, and I thank her because that was my thought process. I thank Jay for not, not doing that. So we finally get together and have dinner. And I remember thinking, I'm going in here. This girl about to talk shit. I'm not going to be a friend. She's going to be so jealous. She's going to be A, B, C, and D. And I was right about all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I was clear. You got over it though. Right? I got <laughs> over it. it you have talking shit. <laughs> that talking is shit, Angela. Not <laughs> and it was, and I didn't want to be bothered. But I was like, fine, I'll fuck with her. Well, okay, tell your version of it, Jay. So what had happened was, is that I, <laughs> very, I did come on too strong from this regard. I was never jealous. I was very excited that Carrie got this sure. job because you know you guys know what a big show first take is and to put a black woman you know in the middle of two big personalities at the time of Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith that's a huge opportunity for a woman in in this business a black woman in this business so to me that was the win however what I did um, make the mistake of is that I had six years of equity at ESPN six years of time so I'd seen a lot of things and so sometimes, especially when you're starting a new job, you need to let people experience things on their own. And then if they want to bring you into what they're experiencing, then that's cool. I just told her from the jump because I had heard the way they talked about this particular job and what was said behind closed doors was that, look, they are intent on having somebody who's seen and not heard. So you need to be careful about that. And, you know, I was just letting her know where the pockets of racism were. Like, I just gave her the whole full rundown, which, again, she's just starting this job. She didn't need to hear all that. You know, right. like, I didn't need to. I felt like in some ways, you know, looking back on it, I was kind of shitting on her moment by telling her all the traps that she had to look out for. I should have maybe gave her, given her some of it but not like all of it. And at that dinner, I gave her all of it. So she probably- so, like, so just imagine, I had been there for a month and I am already, I am already overwhelmed and under promised and really having a hard time. I moved there from LA to Bristol, Connecticut. I'm by myself. I'm working with the two hardest mofos in the building. And cause they, was, they were like, it was like Shawshank Redemption up in that piece. And so I was having a real hard time adjusting, but in my mind, I was gonna stay positive. I wasn't gonna let the outside influence I went from 500 followers on Twitter to like 30,000 in a, in, a, in a month and they were all telling me I wasn't shit. So then I get, I get this moment of meeting Jay 
And I'm excited because I've admired her for so long. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go in with this attitude of just, you know, put my head down, get in and get out. But I was still very excited because I was a fan. And she was, she, everything she said was right. None of it was wrong. It wasn't the timing though. All of it was correct. And so I don't know if you guys ever have that experience in life. Let me experience that person. Let me find out they ain't shit. Let me find out that this person doesn't really fool with me. Let me have that moment myself. I'm not a big believer in telling people how they should feel about somebody. I can give you my experience. I like, ah, I don't fool with that person like that. I can say that, but you can't tell them whether you should like, you can't give them the intricacies, especially in that way. But she did it all, all out of honestly love and to protect me. Um, and I don't know if you guys even followed any of the stuff, but while I sat on that desk, I was the first black woman on a desk Monday through Friday since like Robin Roberts on a show that had such a huge platform. And it was hard and I didn't have much of a voice. And whenever we found ourselves in moments, i.e. me found myself in a moment where I was just completely feeling disrespected, she would, she would you know, jump online and fire off a couple of tweets or have my back in whatever way. So much so to the point that, you know, one of those guys sitting on the desk used to email her and tell her she wasn't right. Got mad at her. Was like, why are you taking and, up the And hasn't spoken to me since. Wow. Yeah. Hold on. He used to, he had he, my back. He, they, he used to text you and say that? Or email no, you? No, he emailed her. He gave her a two-page email, email to tell her why she ain't shit. Because you were defending <laughs> another black woman? Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. it, it happened when, you know, because uh, when a lot of times when things happen on that desk, it's like Carrie would wind up taking the taking the fall for it for no reason no reason whatsoever <laughs> and this was during um when Stephen A. Smith got into trouble for what he said about domestic violence and the thing I tweeted was that I felt like part of the reason some of those conversations on first take exploded into controversy is because they didn't give Carrie enough of a voice and here you are talking about domestic violence and you know um with Carrie not being empowered to add to the conversation, it made it harsher than it was. And so I expressed that, like, maybe y'all wouldn't be in this situation if the woman that's on the desk, you actually empowered her to use her voice to speak in situations like this. And so, I mean, look, it's only two people. I don't mind saying who it is. I mean, Skip doesn't really fuck with me. So, um, you know, he was- sent her a two page email, went off on her. Email. Mad at her. He told her essentially he made her and she, yes. and he tra she yes. traded on him. He claimed, <laughs> what? Yeah, he claimed credit because I'll, I'll say yeah. this uh, to be, I'm just being just fair about the situation. It's like when I first started doing, you know, first take, it was cold pizza then. And, um, you know, Skip was somebody who, whose opinion uh, I'm going to talk about sports opinions. I know people have different opinions about that, but whose opinion about this business and industry, I really respect it. I mean, he did take me under his wing in a lot of ways and taught me about television because that's not something that I was really familiar with coming from a print background. So we okay. had a very good relationship. And so when I did that, when I spoke up on Carrie's behalf, um, you know, about that situation, he was put out. And so he sent me a very long email saying he felt betrayed and he was on some, I made you type of thing. Wow. And, um, you know, we have never, but we haven't talked since. That's not a wow. I'm pretty sure Angela has that story. I'm pretty sure everybody has a story about how you, you don't get defended when you're just one woman going up an entire machine. Now at the time, Jay has, has for very long had been in favor with the company. So he, nothing was going to happen to her. Like people would come for her all the time. And she knew that she was in favor with the company and that she had the power. And the way that she distributed her power or flexed her power was to help those who were not in power, i.e. me. And so when people have resources and power and opportunity, it speaks volumes about who their character, who they are, their character, or what they do with it. Now, I, behind the scenes, was fighting a good fight. Like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Commercial breaks, I'm going off. Like, I'm mad and I'm, I'm arguing. I, and then I come back and I'm just a professional. Right. But it's in, it was incredibly difficult to be in that position because one, I was an outsider, right? I came in, from, I didn't grow up there, right? So people are like, where's she come from? I popped on TV, how she do this? And then, then I had Jay, Jay would just be like, I just wish you could assert yourself more. And I tried, like, don't get me wrong. I went to the bosses, I asked, I said, how do we do it? But a part of me is such a professional that I didn't know how to be like, in word, Am I right? Do you agree? Jamal used to always be like, you should just turn to one of them one day and be like, do you agree? Like, she just hated how <laughs> they, 
would just talk over me, right? I'm sitting there. Or ignore you. And just yell at the nigga. Nigga stops yeah. everything on live TV. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Ninja. What it, girl, how many, never mind, let me stop, I digress. <laughs> the point of the matter, I was about to, about to say, <laughs> but the point of the matter is, is that I would then turn around and save them when they would fuck up royal. Like when they would have these conversations about women that they shouldn't be having. I'd go mm -hmm. back behind somebody and say, hey, you know what, I think you should be careful not to put that there. Or, or one time I was on air and I guess, you know, Stephen A had to apologize for some stuff he said. And I just had to go back. But mind you, I, behind the scenes, I was mad that he loved Floyd, that he had Floyd Mayweather's back. I, he was like, you can't do that. Floyd is da-da-da. And, and I'm like, yeah, I can. You know, it was, you, it's incredibly sexist. And you have to be okay with it. And you got to put your head down. I call that, you know, my rookie season. Because I know all these rooks taking a lot of shit. And so they just deal with it. So that was, for two years, that's what I had to deal with. And it was difficult. But that's when our friendship really came into play. Like, she just had my back no matter what. Behind the scenes, tweet here and there. All that means, all that did was speak volumes to how she respected me. And as a result, I think people started to see that we were really friends and they weren't doing the comparison thing. Fast forward to when she gets in trouble, everybody's silent. Everybody's singing her praises for years. Got her back, love her, everybody her homie. Nobody was publicly, not nobody, there were a handful of people, but all those people who loved her and talked about how great and mighty she was, they were just silence and their silence you know what silence means, right? They they in agreement. She, she yeah, she twisting in the wind. This man is is going at her head. Y'all's president is going at her head, and I can't even get the company to say nothing. Right. So we're tweet. I'm tweeting. I'm saying whatever. Like this ain't right. Like I'm hurt. Like hurt. I'm calling her at five a.m. I'm like, girl, how you doing? She's like, you know, unbothered, but probably upset. <laughs> and I legit like this is the craziness. She was like, I'm gonna have to control Carrie's tweet. My tweets weren't like, fuck you, Donald. They were just like, that shit ain't right. You know, mm -hmm. my, what's going on with my friend ain't right. And, and the fact that we're sitting here acting like this is normal, none of this is normal. Don't get distracted. This man is wrong. Little stuff. Carrie, you can't, you can't be tweeting that. What? There's, and then when it's all said and done, if they had to do it over again, I, I guarantee they would defend her. They would have her back because she was ahead of her time and she was on the right side of it. Hey, Jamel, I wonder, right, how would you handle an email like the one you got from Skip Bayless now? Because it was a different time back then, but if somebody sent you an email like that now, how would you, how would you respond? Um, would you air them out publicly? Like, what would you do? No, I wouldn't air them out publicly. Like, um, it would be, I mean, this is the first time I've ever even talked about that. Like, most people don't even know that that happened. Um, and this is not me airing it, it out. It's just, like, the truth of what it was is that um, it – you know, now I probably pick up the phone and it probably would be a lot of cuss words involved. And um, what cuss words would they be? <laughs> oh, would, this would one start with the M and end with the A? <laughs> yeah. And, and my, you know, my thing with, with him was that, um, you know, I, I felt like that the, where our relationship was is that you could have called me. Like, and we could have had that conversation face to face. And um, you know, beyond this, that it's just the entitlement of thinking that he made me. <laughs> it was just like, oh, slow down now. Like, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm, right. I'm like, I'm grateful for how you showed me the ropes and, and grateful that I was able to be on a show like First Take to expand, you know, my profile and to, to really, um, you know, kind of raise uh, the awareness of who I was. I mean, it was all a part of a, a con of, of a concoction of things that led to me getting um, the show with Mike, his and hers. Yeah. But, you know, like, eh, let's not, let, you know, let's just calm down on the patriarchy real fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dad. So, yeah, man, I mean, also, right? yeah. dad. <laughs> so I, I, I would feel it probably a lot different. I mean, granted, you know, being at ESPN, of course, when you're dealing with somebody of his profile, you have to be careful with with how you check people because it's a lot of people in there. And I had another situation. Um, uh, I'm gonna say that one for my book, so I ain't gonna. Tell you. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to. I want to bring it out in the Breakfast Club. Let no, me, let no, me. no, don't tell them. Would y'all have, have Skip Bayless on the show to address it? Like, would hell you? yeah, we would. He would never do it, but hell yeah, we <laughs> never would. Never do it. Never. Skip is. I would look, but let's say this: the same way that she speaks in favor of Skip, I will say this: he's an incredibly complicated human as most people who are successful in any industry, they are. There's a side of them that's very generous and loving and caring, and then there's a side of them that's very competitive and lethal. 
and sometimes sometimes those two get mixed up. Like I y'all know, like y'all work together, y'all know how she just looks. Come on, y'all ain't brand new. And so what happens is when you when you work with people in a way in which you respect their talents, because you truly do. Like I respect Skip and Stephen A's talents tremendously. I remember the best advice I ever got was from one of my mentors. His name is Ian Eagle. He said, that is going to be a tough position. He said, sit at that desk and listen and listen carefully. And that's all you need to do. And that was the best advice I ever got because I learned a lot from them. Their work ethic is superior. I mean, they love to work. Um, but they are incredibly complicated individuals, and that's what happens when people are really talented um, and competitive, and they can't separate the two at times, right? It's just hard. It, it, it's unfortunate, and I say this about Jay. She's one of the few people who can do that, you know? She's one of the few people who can separate, like, she's extremely talented, and she's extremely comfortable in her own skin. And while she's competitive, it's not so much against an, a person. It's about the idea of building something and making it better and being the best at it. Because women were not embracing me. To this day, women were not embracing me, um, or not embracing me. And she's always had to not defend me, but have my back and be like, no, she's cool. Like, I know she like to wear lashes all the way out here, and she <laughs> high heels up to here, and skirt like this, but she hella cool, like, cool with her. Why don't, like, people, like, why don't people like you, Carrie? Oh, shut up, Charlotte. <laughs> 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 so who are some other guests that are going to be on this season? If you can um, do, I guess we are we. I guess since we, you know, we are at liberty to say some, though, right? Now yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Now that we, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in addition to LeBron, as you guys know, um, Charles Barkley will be paying us a visit, um, okay. and also uh, Corey Bush, um, who a rising star in in politics. You know, she just run a very tough primary in Missouri. She was a Ferguson protester. And her story is really incredible. You know, she's a single mother. She was homeless at one point, and mm -hmm. now she's a step away from representing District One in Missouri in, in Congress. And she beat a a twenty year Democratic in, incumbent. Incredible black woman um, that has a great story. So those are just some of the. You guys have to watch Knock Down the House. Have you guys seen that? It's a Netflix no. special. Yeah, yeah. It's she's. A, it's a, I mean, she's basically. She's in it. Yeah, okay. she's in it. Her Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Like they got all these women who just decided that they were fed up. They didn't come from traditional political backgrounds and they decided that they wanted to be change agents out here. So it's a lovely, it's a wonderful documentary, but Corey Bush is absolutely somebody that people need to know and watch. Yeah. She's going to be a member of the squad along with, you know, yeah. uh, Ilhan Omar, all, like all of them, like she's right cut from that same cloth. She was a part of the, Ferguson can't get, gave out some really great, gave out, produced some really good activist stuff, you know, slash politicians. And she was, she started, she's a nurse. And she, she went to protest in Ferguson just because she felt like they needed a nurse out there. And as a result, she saw all the things that were happening. And she's like, oh no, I'm running for office. Like, this is That's crazy. Dope. It's a beautiful story. She's a, she's a dope black woman. We have, we have a lot of commitment. Charlemagne will be on there. We would love to have Angela <laughs> Yee and DJ yes. Indy on there as well. Like, we would love you guys to come on. Like, we, we're about to be out here acting a fool. And it's tape, so you can do whatever. What do you think Stick to Sports will do for women in sports and, and Black women in journalism in general? Um, you know, honestly, I mean, I, I think the, the beauty of us having this show, I mean, of course, people need to see that it's possible. But, um, you know, mm -hmm. secondly, I think the way we're doing it is really important to point out is that we're executive producers on this show. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, we have a lot of say so, obviously being EPs, um, a lot of input. Uh, this is about, this show is truly built around us. So one piece of it is to get on TV. And as you guys know, another piece of it is to own a portion of what you're doing. And so, um, that ownership component is key because look, Carrie and I are both suffering from a little bit of PTSD from our time <laughs> at ESPN, okay? <laughs> and we were in a situation where, um, you know, working for such a huge platform is that you have very little ownership of what you do. And um, we both reached this point in our careers where we want to work with people and not necessarily for people. So this is a true uh, collaboration. And, and, you know, not only that is that, uh, it's certain things, especially now in this time in our country, you know, we have a black woman who is, you know, the vice presidential nominee. Um, black women are the most educated group uh, in the country. They're the only racial ethnic group. 
that owns more businesses than their male counterparts in that racial ethnic mm -hmm. group. So this is mm -hmm. a time where a lot of black women are seizing their power. And I hope mm -hmm. through us that they can see that they don't have to wait for somebody to acknowledge them. They don't have to wait for somebody to quote unquote, give them an opportunity. It's the time to seize your power the word. at whatever level you are at. And so it's not even seizing, it's reclaiming because we're already powerful. We just don't right. even go and, and grab our power. I think that no, you she always got have that to have me a... the other day, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I did not. I literally, I literally told her that yesterday. Angela, go ahead, how Carrie. Do? Go ahead, Carrie. Okay, how do you do? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't. Okay. Okay. I don't. Uh, no, we said, honestly, we, I knew, and this is a true story. I knew I wanted to leave. And I don't want you guys to think that we hate ESPN in a way in which but we do hate the process, as many people do. But we endured the process. The platform was amazing. We wouldn't be here today in, in this way, right. if you will. People wouldn't know it's in a certain way. So I'm not disrespecting that at all because we do have to acknowledge that. But maybe two years in or a year after, maybe months after she left, I was like, I'm ready to roll. I've been ready to roll. But we didn't know how to go about it or I didn't know how to go about it. You get advice from different people. And they're like, well, I think... You know, but in your spirit, y'all know. Yes. Like, you like, like, oh, how could you leave that great opportunity? It's yeah. so amazing. Exactly. Then you're those like, people I had to stop talking to. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, those people I had to stop talking to. So what I did was, and Jamel loves to tell this story, I hired a production crew. I went to her house with a bottle of wine. I was like, okay, I'm going to be over there on Tuesday. And we bought what kind of wine? Oh, it was a uh, Bella Gloss. <laughs> You know the one? That's my favorite. Yeah. So <laughs> is it the Bell Gloss or Bella Gloss? We're not quite sure. Yeah, not sure. We have a just just real black. We don't know. Yeah. But it's good. We do know that. Good. And so I went to her house with a crew. I sat down. Uh, we set up. We asked questions. We talked about things that were uncomfortable. We talked about things that Jamal and I don't agree with everything. But the beauty of not agreeing is that it's not personal because it's right. just from a place of no. My 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 socialization says that it's this way, and she thinks differently. No one's right or wrong. It's just different perspectives. And I thought it was beautiful and the level of respect that we have for one another. So I was like, this is great. We can make this a TV show. Now, mind you, I hadn't left. That probably was like in August, July and August. I was still working, but I was making a plan. Mm -hmm. And somehow it stumbled into the hands of some folks over at Vice. And from the moment, that was like maybe March at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this was before George Floyd um, and all kinds of things were happening. And it took, it didn't take that long for them to be like, we on board, you know? Um, and from that moment on, we were very clear. Like as she mentioned, we were like, we want to be a piece of the show. And we have other, pro I have other projects. She has other projects. We're working on things separately, but we needed to have ownership because the ownership gave us our power and our peace. You have to realize if you ever get attached to a person, place, or thing, and you forget your mission, then you're, you're out of your peace and your power. So we wanted to do that. Jamal had already experienced that longer than I had because she had left she had left long before I did, but I used to do things like ask, could I go to the bathroom? I was like, can I go to the bathroom? She's like, he you was free. definitely ran from Shawshank when he first got out in society. <laughs> can I go to the bathroom? You I had to raise your hands. <laughs> right, exactly. was a, <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to do that, Carrie. Who came up with the uh, the petty name, Stick to Sports? Because that's a nice little jab at ESPN. It was not a jab at, at ESPN, but like, uh, you know, it's funny because like we, we had to, when the original press release dropped, that had uh, that we were doing the show together. We had a name in there that we just kind of came up with, just to fit into the press release. But Stick to Sports was going to be a segment in the show, regardless of what it was named. Mm -hmm. And then the more that it circulated around uh, the company advice, the more that Carrie and I talked about it, the more we talked about it with our production staff. It was like, oh, I think that's the name of the show. So we just kind of arrived at it uh, from that standpoint. I feel like this would be my favorite sports show to watch, so I'm excited. So congratulations. We well, appreciate that. Thank Although I, mean, I tell you. people, it's a, I, you know, it's not a sports show. I mean, we are we are delving into a lot of different areas. Now, granted, right. but the core of it is probably sports, and there's so much around that that you can break off into also, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about pop culture, politics, mm -hmm. news, especially with an election coming up. You know, we, we have a lot to discuss there. One of the reasons we had you know, Corey uh, Bush on the show. It's like, we didn't talk to Corey Bush about sports. We talked to her about like what she's trying to accomplish in her story. I mean, and even with LeBron, the majority of that conversation was not about sports. So, um, well, he you know, did mention that the Lakers will win the chip. 
Uh, I know you, you're shocked. I know no. you're shocked that this actually came up, but it, it actually did. Because um, no, she, she wants to know about the sports that we're discussing. <laughs> but uh, we, you know, we, we, we're not going to, this is not going to be a show where we're breaking down who's winning the AFC East. Right. Now that Tom Brady is playing with the Bucks. Like, that's not what this show is about. When we do touch on sports, it will be from a 10,000 foot view and talking about those messy intersections with race, gender, politics, culture in that particular way. What time does the show come on tonight? It's Wednesday. Uh, it's on Wednesday at 10 p.m. This is going to air tomorrow, so it's going to be tonight. Got you. Listen, I heard, <laughs> I, I heard that, um, I heard y'all did an interview with Bossop and y'all gave Jason Whitlock and Sage Steel some smoke. <laughs> Damn, Charlamagne, who is your sources? <laughs> what you saying? <laughs> I think that headline might, they have the best headlines, no? <laughs> He's looking at it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not out on bottom. I just heard that. I just heard that. Yeah. I, I don't know if we, I call it professional ether. We don't know if we gave, no. We, like that. Like that. <laughs> we, we went out of our, we have gone out of our way actually to not acknowledge other people <laughs> when they come for us. And that is, that should be considered grace and mercy. And, right. and they should be welcome for that. Thank you. You're welcome. So I, the reality is, is that when it was brought up to us, we were just like, it's not so much because people, especially people, black conservatives love to try to tell you it's because they, that we disagree with their, their politics or I, I give a damn about your politics. I don't like people who aren't good people. Like I genuinely don't want to be around people who aren't good people. If you want to associate it with politics, so be it. But black folks, as Jamal pointed out so equally, we all grew up in a household where a lot of us went to church every Sunday. And I, a lot of us know what we should be, what we ain't allowed to do and do. And it's not so much that we don't believe in a more conservative approach. A lot of us have had that as, as we've grown up. But I think, I think it's disrespectful and it's intellectually dishonest, as Jay would like to say, for people to just make it so simple as, I don't agree with the way you vote, so I don't like you, or I'm trying to marginalize you. And that has, we, like, we, we purposely don't talk about that. I mean, we do it on purpose because we don't want to give any more attention. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. I mean, no, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything that was, was disrespectful. Um, and I, I think we were just really being honest about it. And, um, you know, the, the thing is, is that for, as you know, I'm never one, I don't, I don't start it, but I'll end it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll end it in a minute if, you, if that's where you want to take it. And so, um, you know, I think there is, there was, there was a professional level of respect that I give to basically any black woman in this business who gets right. to every point because I know how hard it is to do that. What I don't like is that when I see some of those same women who in front of everybody else, they're presenting this picture of solidarity, but behind closed doors, they're doing Ooh, working against you. to undermine Ooh. the progress of other women. And so I, that's what I t take an issue with. Like Carrie said, this is not about anybody's politics. Um, the thing is, most, I find it hilarious that there's this, this picture or this depiction that black people are all liberal. Um, you know, Charlamagne, you're from South Carolina, right? You know conservative black folks. I mean, we all do. If you got a meemaw, you know conservative black folks, all right? A grandfather, mother, whatever. It's like the, don't, nobody gives the pull yourself up by the bootstraps more to black people than other black, black people. people. <laughs> exactly. For sure. So it's for like, sure. we have grown up on that message for a minute. So for some of these um, black conservatives to act like they deliver some kind of new sermon, it's like, no, we have literally heard this our whole lives. The reason mm -hmm. a lot of people don't mess with y'all or a lot of reason we don't mess with like the Republican party is because y'all can't say, y'all can't denounce the most basic of racism. We don't have a problem with conservatives. We don't fuck with racists. There's a difference. And or stupid, for that yeah, matter. Stupid. And certainly, I mean, for me, is that it's, it's not a political argument. It's about, with these two people in particular, it's about the character of who they are that I think yep. we all question. There's a reason why they have a certain reputation in this business. That's all I got to say. There you go. Is it dangerous for you though, Jamel? Because we, we saw, I, I saw uh, D.L. Hughley got into a situation yesterday. Do people run up on you too, like Trump supporters? No, I've never had that. And I, this is where, and I'm glad you asked that, that question, Charlamagne, because this is where I remind people um, who might think about it, is that my husband is a legal gun owner. 
and that's all I got to say. <laughs> also six foot two. You can try it if you want to. I'm also from Detroit, and I wasn't always at ESPN. So <laughs> you can get all the smoke that you ask for. <laughs> so, but I've never had that. Um, thankfully, gracefully, yeah. I have never had yeah. a situation where I've had a public confrontation. Uh, with somebody. I mean, I get a lot of nasty messages and emails and all of those kinds of things, but I, I think they even know not to jump that stupid. I remind you of how she confronted uh, Michael Jordan now. Like, she don't want nobody <laughs> to confront her, but she don't want to call Jordan. It's I'm all love that. between me and MJ. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I, 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 I tell Carrie this all the time, but I'm so proud of y'all because it took a lot of nuts to walk away from ESPN. Like, there's so many people who will not walk away from the mighty ESPN. They think ESPN is their whole existence is to end all be all. So for you two to step off the boat so you can walk on water is to be applauded because folks be scared to, to step away. And it says that you both know your power and, and I respect that a lot. Well, thank you. Um, we are Andy Dufresne and Red. Uh, who got <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Josh, hey, so when y'all, listen, we gonna let y'all go because we know y'all rapping, but let me tell you, there is a place, a real place. Y'all been to Zawatsuneho? Have y'all been? Mm -mm. To where? Okay. The so watch me so in, 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 in Shawshank Redemption, that's where he's saying, Come meet me. Andy telling Red, Come meet me in the watch Conejo. It's a real place in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when I left first take, we went to Zanatineo, Zanatineo, me and a bunch of girls, and Jamel was a part of it. And she was like, Freedom. And so it's a real <laughs> place. So whenever, whenever y'all listening, whoever's listening, whatever y'all want to be free, y'all need to go there and just enjoy y'all freedom. Well, and Mexico's it. open right now, so. Yes, and, and real quick before we leave, I just want to congratulate you, Hall of Famers. Such a yeah, such an honor to be in the presence Thank of you. radio elite, radio royalty. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's understated what you guys have done for the culture and just in general to have the longevity and the success. Like, I, just all the kudos to you guys because that's a tremendous honor that most yeah, of us never get to sniff. So. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You guys are our first interview since we found out and announced. Oh, congratulations. Okay. congratulations. Congratulations. Angela, I'm sending you nothing but love because you, you're the only lady on the ship, so I know how that is. <laughs> Thank you. Know, you need extra positive. <laughs> I know, right. I'm sending you extra love. Charlamagne and DJ MV. I mean, come on. You guys are great. You guys are, first of all, in your own right. This is, this is, um, y'all, I've said this a lot to Charlamagne, even before this is where you all were, but to have the ear of the community to to really influence like you guys people say influence a lot but you guys are influ all of you guys are yeah. and it, and i want you to understand and i think you do but understand your power and that responsibility because it's huge uh and for us to be on here and you guys to stamp us is great and so we're grateful and we are so so excited for your success together and separately we wish you nothing but the best thank you Kay. why coco being so quiet Cause she's sleeping. Wow. Oh. Seven a.m. My dog is tired. She was sixteen years old. She ain't trying to be up here with these people. Did you guys know Coco? Coco one time that her paw broken by her auntie Jamel. You know what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gonna go. Before she tell that story. Jamel <laughs> broke your dog's paw. It and was, she was an drunk, accident. and she kept stepping on the paw, and she didn't know she was drunk, and she couldn't hear my dog yelping for help. Wow. I was like, if you don't get off my dog's toe. I just want everybody to understand she's not as gracious and humble and she's <laughs> great. Um, great. Now people think I'm an animal abuser. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, now yeah. Peter about to come for Jamel on Twitter. Jamel will be on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, Twitter be for Peter time. by right. this afternoon. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you guys. It was a pleasure. Enjoy. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations.